lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club. Uh, writer, broadcaster, internet entrepreneur and public speaker Andrew Keane founded audiocafe.com in 1995 and built it into a popular first generation internet company. Since then he's written many books about how the internet has evolved and changed and not for the better. In his latest book, The Internet is Not the Answer, he claims Instagram is a useful symbol of everything that has gone wrong with our digital culture over the last quarter of a century. He joins me now in studio. Good morning, um, Andrew. You're very welcome. And I'm, I'm fascinated to meet you because uh, a lot of the things that you are saying are things that, that I have privately felt but not haven't been able to articulate as, as well as, as you have. Why do you think the digital era has been such a disaster? Three reasons, Mark. The first is it's compounding the inequality between rich and poor and contributing to the destruction of the middle class. Secondly, it's killing jobs and not really creating many new ones. Thirdly, it's created a surveillance economy where uh, these huge monopolies now, their business model is watching us. So we're being packaged up as the product. We're not benefiting from this. Okay, go. Point number one. Expand, please. Point number one is... We have a winner-take-all economy in the, in, in, the, in the Internet age. We were promised that this platform would enable innovation, allow everyone to set up companies, and in a way we've all set up companies. But only, there are only one winner. In the old economy, we had Hertz and Avis. Now we just have a Google. Now we just have a Facebook. Now we just have an eBay. So it's creating these global monopolies. In Europe, for example, 90% of people use Google, 90%. Of, uh, of people who do search on the internet rely on Google. That's a monopoly and it's actually quite fortunate that the European Union is now looking into Google as a potential monopolist. What we're seeing is the decimation of the old middle class, whether it's in the creative industries, whether it's now with transportation, hospitality, Airbnb and Uber are potential monopolies too. So what we're seeing is the sweeping away of that old middle ground, the middle class, the creative middle class that made up the backbone of 20th century industrial life. And in our new age, in our digital age, we just have the extremes. We have a very high end a tiny proportion of millionaires and billionaires in Silicon Valley, and then the rest of us. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to go to your third point, because um, given the business I'm in, that's, that's one of the things that, that I have had the greatest concerns about. Um, um, the internet, uh, the erosion, sorry, sorry the, the almost destruction of any form of privacy. I, I personally convince there's no such thing as privacy anymore. And, and uh, the surveillance economy, as you call it, we have all bought into this idea that you have to have your life up there, all your information, everything. They, they, they now have more information about us than they ever had before. And uh, with, with that information, they can track us. They can, they can tell what we did this morning. They can tell how often we went to the bathroom. I, I mean, I know that's a kind of a ridiculous example, but it has got to that extent. And I, to be honest with you, having read Huxley as a young man, I'm desperately uncomfortable about it, and I'm seeing it coming to be in my lifetime, and it scares the PJs out of me. Yeah, and the scary thing is that we're not, it's not 1984. They don't want to... Um, well, they don't want to control us, they just want our money. Yeah, they don't want to propagandize us while we're in the bathroom. But All they, they want, want to do is sell us toilet paper. But how long like before that. they want to control us? Well, Isn't that's it? the scary thing. Uh, and you're absolutely right. It's supposed to be a free economy. They, they're, they're proud of the fact that services like Google search or, or Facebook, uh, the Facebook social engine, they're all free. But the real cost of free is very high. The real cost of free is we become the product. They know more and more about us, as you say. They join up the dots, whether it's in self-driving cars, whether it's on search, on mapping, whether it's in Gmail, whether it's on the Android mobile platform. So we've all become the product. It's rather like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Okay, what do we do about it? Is it too late, by the way? In your no, opinion? it's not too okay, late. Okay, so what do we do? So the internet is currently not the answer, but it has to be the answer. So what we need to do is understand the world, ideally, of course, read books like mine, understand the way in which this so-called economy is working. We've been made the mugs. Secondly, we need to rely on government regulation more. We need to invite in government. Regulation is not against innovation. Think about how the government case against Microsoft created the opportunity for companies like uh, Google 
Uh, Google is the new Microsoft, and we need companies to behave themselves. We also need the entrepreneurs to grow up. At the moment, they're like the robber barons at the beginning of the 19th century. They need to be more socially responsible. They need to give back rather than just take. And generally, the Internet has created a culture of rights. What we need to do is reinvent it as a culture of responsibility. And that means you and I and everyone else. It's all too easy to blame everyone else, but the bullying, the lack of civility, the uh, theft of intellectual content, much of that is, is you and I and everybody else's responsibility. We've got to behave like adults, like menches on the Internet. At the moment, most of us are behaving like children. It is. There's a great line in the West Wing, which you probably know of, um, um, the, the, the President's um, um, Chief of Cabinet uh, said, look, sir, everybody knows the Internet's only good for two things, gossip and pornography. Uh, but, but as part of the gossip thing, the bullying, again, as parents and, and watching what we do in this program, the pervasiveness of that at all levels, and it doesn't matter who you are, that, that once somebody out there in the digital world decides that they want to bully you or pick on you or invade your privacy, it's almost impossible to stop it. And there are some positive examples of that. For example, Mark Andreessen, who's a very well-known Silicon Valley venture capitalist. He was also the founder of Netscape. He's been around a long time. He's refusing to invest in anonymous uh, services like uh, Secret, which encourage bullying. So some of the venture capitalists are understanding that. But you're absolutely right. In my book, I talk about the way in which there are many teenage suicides with people being bullied online anonymously. And this is like an epidemic. It's terrifying. 500 a year in this country. Andrew, it's fascinating. Uh, it is the future. It's not an anti-Luddite or, an, or a, a Luddite argument. It's, we're not saying it's bad, you know, we don't want to burn all, all the computers. It is the future. We're all going to have to live in it. So therefore, we have a responsibility to, to at least have a look at the other side of it. The Internet is not the answer. Andrew King, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club.